Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Christy. Today I am documenting what carrots I am growing for 2022 in my really short season of 100 days of growing. So during the pantry challenge of 2022, I learned that I need to grow a ton more carrots, like a ton. So we use our carrots in three main ways. We use our carrots in fresh eating, which is one, I need to have a lot of long storage carrots, which I'm going to share with you what varieties I'm growing this year to do that, which I have grown in the past, some of them, and some of them are new to me. Um, so there's that. And then I need some that will preserve well in the freezer or freeze dryer. And so I have different varieties of that. And then some shredded ones to freeze um, as well. I also sometimes like to use um, them as a powder because then I can add them to smoothies. And I also do some juicing of carrots as well in the summertime, so there's that as well. So I'm just gonna go through some of the varieties that I have growing this year. Our, our area is extremely bad for Aster's yellows, which is something that affects carrots. I actually have an article about it here on my website. The farm blog, I have information about this. Asters, yellows, and plant disease. So carrots are one of the ones that are susceptible to asters, yellows. I wrote this article about what we are doing here to combat this, but I'm just gonna read it to you. If you wanna go and find it, um, you can find it on our website, which is hotchkissflowerfarm.ca, but uh, I will link it below. But growing in Northern Alberta, Canada has its challenges for common disease diseases in plants that cause crop failures for flower producers as well as home gardeners. That awful disease is called Aster's yellows and it is spread by grasshoppers primarily in our northern climate. So these are some of my flowers that I grew last year. These are actually asters that I had grown and typically we don't grow asters in northern Alberta simply because the Aster's yellows are really really bad and so people associate those two things um, but these were beautiful i love them they turned out great and i'm growing a ton more of these this year by the way um it's the duchess aster in that photo anyway so what is aster's yellows this horrible disease is a viral like disease caused by phytoplasma this disease affects not only flowers but vegetables too in fact, this disease affects over 300 species of plants, including garden vegetables like carrots, celery, tomatoes, and even leafy greens like lettuce. Broadleaf species of wild vegetation, such as dandelions, can be carriers. In the flower garden, plants that become infected can include marigolds, zinnia, snapdragons, petunia, and asters. Asters yellows can look like many things. Most common in our northern climate, plants will be small, stunted, and have yellowing leaves and deform flowers or foliage. Asters, for example, will show signs of chlorosis and have very slow growth and deformed flower heads. Lettuce will have a pinkish or tanned colored spots and often abnormal inner leaves, usually twisted. Carrots will taste bitter and have a lot of hair on the root of the entire carrot. Often the carrot top will look unnaturally bronzed in the foliage. So this is one of the things that we have to be cautioned about here in our northern climate with this disease. Because our, our carrots, we can't plant our carrots where we had them in previous years because it can you know, reestablish this, this disease in the plants. So where does the disease come from? There are many opinions on where this disease comes from and many will say it comes from planting susceptible plants. It seems that planting lettuce or snapdragons in your backyard does not cause asters yellows. However, they can catch it from the right critters that stop by to snack on your plant friends. Asters yellows shows up in a lot of monocrops, especially in areas where canola or broadleaf crops are con concentrated for several years in an area. Asters yellow will show up in our gardens because the pests bring it in there. Very rarely are your plants the cause of the disease unless you planted a sick plant, which is highly unlikely. Grasshoppers can feast on an infected dandelion in the ditch next to a canola field and the disease invades the intestinal tract of the grasshopper, 
crosses into the salivary glands and then multiplies. The hopper becomes the host. That hopper starts munching on the canola fields, in infecting multiple plants and thousands of hoppers, which then become, begins spreading the infection, which eventually makes its way from monocrop planted areas to your backyard garden in an easy swoop. What to do if you have the yellows in your garden. The best tool is to prevent Aster's yellows from infecting your plants, but in reality, it can still happen, no matter how hard you try to prevent it. So if you suspect you may have Aster's yellows spreading, spread by grasshoppers, there are some tips that we practice here at Hotchkiss Flower Farm. Remove the infected plant and dispose of it. Do not compost the plant, burn it. Pick off any grasshoppers on the plant that are near the ones you disposed of. Once hopper free, dust surrounding plants with diatomaceous earth and cover with a floating row cover in case you missed a hopper or two. Look at pest control for grasshoppers. On our farm, we use guinea fowl and chickens for grasshopper control. However, you may want to pick up some grasshopper bran and bait your, lo your garden safely. How to prevent Aster's yellows? On Hodgkiss Flower Farm, we primarily use grass, guinea fowl and as grasshopper pest control. It has been most e efficient thus far in prevention of all grasshopper damage. We focus on having strong immune system in our plants for natural immunity if they are exposed to any disease or stress. We also use floating row covers upon planting susceptible flower crops like asters. We rotate what we plant here and we focus on the soil health to support healthy immunity. Crops like lettuce, we grow under protection of either a cold frame greenhouse or row cover. Carrots, we try to plant away from all flowers and broad leaf crops. And then this is a little video of our, this is, this is our, this is our aster control, aster's yellows control. Meet our team. Aren't they so cute? Yeah. Okay. So you can find the rest of this article. There's not much more to read, but I really wanted to kind of emphasize on that because I feel it's super important. And again, that's our website. This is my website, Hotchkiss Flower Farm. You can find all kinds of information what we're growing this year for flowers, um, stuff like that information is on there. I am going to start to try to get more information um, out to you about planting and stuff as I, as I can. So this is just a few of the things that we're growing this year. So um, yeah, you'll be able to check it out uh, on the website. So just thought I would let you know in case you're looking for some references of information that's where you can find it on my website to that article that I wrote. Um, okay, I'm going to kind of go through the different types of carrots first. And there are um, a variety of the, the four, there's four main varieties of carrots. And the ones that we're going to focus on today are the, Den, the Danver carrots, which Danver carrots are more of a um, generic carrot. They have kind of more of a medium length with a rounded shoulder and pointy ends. So, you know, think of the carrot, the typical carrot that you would find at the grocery store, more classic generic. And they are about six to seven inches long. These ones, these ones are good for places where you have a heavy soil and a shallow soil. Then the other variety that we're focusing on is, or the other type or category of, of um, carrots are nanties. Now nanties, um, they're more of an heirloom. They're, they actually are an heirloom, like a France sort of vibe to them. Um, they have a distinctive refined look. Um, they're more cylinder, cylindrical and smooth. They have a very smooth complexion, I would call it. They are sometimes, um, right from the shoulder to the root, they are usually quite, um, the same diameter. So they, they are very uniform from the top to the bottom. The Nantes are, um, they, they grow the best in loose, well-draining soil and juicing. 
So I find that these are the best for juicing and they are most recommended for juicing varieties. So that's what we are going to grow in our more deeper, well-draining soils that we have. And um, also these are usually the fastest maturing. So we kind of have a variety of those. We're gonna go over the ones I have here. But there's one other type that I wanna talk about that we are growing this season and it is the um, Chantonet varieties of carrots or the the types of carrots so these ones are short they have really strong roots that like they the roots are very distinctive compared to the other carrots and they will go through anything they go through rocks they go through anything so these are for like places where you have a mixed soil where they might have a gravel base underneath or even clay um these would be a great choice there um, and I'm growing some of these for that purpose because I have some places where we have, where I want to use carrots as living mulch that are really hard. So this is the type of carrot I will be planting. Now these ones are distinctive as well because they have an orange exterior or a deep red orange core. And these are not the coreless type. Um, these ones definitely have a core and they do have a bit more heat tolerance so they're not gonna bolt. Um, they're just a hard, they're, they're really a tough carrot um, for, for climates that are really tough or areas that like a new garden area, maybe this would be something to use there. So these ones are, these ones are more um, for fresh eating and juicing. They're not really a storage carrot. So that that's one of my, my things that I'm going to be um, growing or one of the reasons why I'm growing those ones. So these are old seeds that I had. These are um, Danvers. So these are the Danver varieties. So Danvers, again, the Danver varieties are the medium length carrots with the round shoulders and pointed ends. These are coreless and, or nearly coreless, sorry. And they are, have a really sweet, rich flavor. So Danvers, that's typical for Danvers to have a sweet, rich flavor. These Nantes and Danvers are different. We'll, we'll go over that. But these ones here, I think that these ones would grow pretty much anywhere. Um, and these ones are these ones will be storage carrots. Um, on here it says excellent quality reddish orange carrot that is sweet and tender yet incredibly crisp. Perfect for slicing and dicing, for canning and freezing. Uniform so soil moisture is essential in producing crisp sweet carrots. So outdoors as soon as the soil can be worked. So these ones will be used for pickled carrots and any processing that we do um, and maybe, and, and most likely storage, but mostly the processing, okay? Um, and the, the brand is Heritage, which is what our local farm store carries here in town. Scarlet Nantes, and so this is a popular and depend, dependable nearly coreless carrot that makes it ideal for freezing. Bright orange in color and roots are sweet and tender yet incredibly crisp another one. These ones take 10 to 14 days to germinate. I think that's pretty standard for carrots, 10 to 14 days. Um, days to maturity for the red Danvers is 65 to 80 days and these ones are 68 days. So the Nantes are 68 day and the red cord Danvers are a 65 to 80 day which for storage ones, I don't mind that they're 80 day because they do get a little bit sweeter when they have a frost. Carrots, that's the trick with carrots. If they're bitter, they have asterisk yellows and if they're sweet, they've had a frost with those guys. Okay, next, let's see what we got here. So this is the Royal Chantony and I got these ones from West Coast Seeds. Now. I noticed that this has a very low rating and I didn't notice this before. So I'm kind of curious why it has a low rating and I might go check that out to see. Um, but these are cool season 70 day carrots. Um, these, these guys have a good flavor and ideal shape for juicing. Also good for freezing and canning. These big dark orange carrots are five to six inches long. They are amazingly sweet. They produce roots that grow to a uniform size and shape. They are perfect for market gardens. So that's interesting. You could use these for market gardens as well, not just home preservation. These carrots are big and chunky and can be grown to a really hefty size. Uh, Royal Chantony is the standard carrot for heavy 
or shallow soils. So if you have a shallow area to grow or a heavy soil, this would be your carrot. This, you know, and it's multi-purpose because it's sweet, so you could eat it for fresh eating and it can preserve. So it's kind of a dual purpose. That's cool. Um, the flesh has a fine grain and it's reddish orange um, inside and out. It was the first made available in, it was, oh, since it was first made available in 1952, it counts as an heirloom seed. It matures in 70 days. And so there's a few points it has. So it can plant with beans, brassicas, chives, leeks, lettuce, onions, peas, peppers, pole beans, rad, radish, rosemary, sage, and tomatoes. Avoid planting with dill. So don't plant with dill. Don't plant with parsnips. Don't plant with potatoes. Um, pl carrots planted near tomatoes may have stunted roots, but will have ex exceptional flavor. So it does, that's true, you guys. If you plant your carrots next to tomatoes, it amplifies their flavor, but it reduces their size. And I think it's just because the feeding, like you have to, you have to actually amend the soil more frequently because they don't get as big because they're heavy feeders. But anyway, oh, growing steps, pH, pH, um, ideal pH level is six to 6.8 for growing carrots, by the way. And they have all this information if you're interested in finding it on westcoastseeds.com. So there's that. I want to see why these have a low rating though. Um... So that person said that we're good. I grew alongside Yellowstone, which they did wonderfully. I only grew a few large roots. Um, some of these cracked readily were, weren't so nice looking. Seemed more prone to carrot rust fly, but also never covered them. So that could be my fault. Um, so this person is suggesting that most roots ended up looking like small um, thumblin carrot type carrots um it sounds like this person had a growing like maybe it was their amendments or the like this sounds like they had a fail in their garden I wouldn't I don't agree with this being the actual seed I think that it's just um perhaps maybe the place that it was growing was either underwatered um or under amended maybe it didn't have the right ph or amendments to me, that's what that sounds like. All right, we'll just skip that. Okay, let's see what else we got here. So we did this, um, the Goldfinger. Now the Goldfinger is a new one for me, this variety here. This one comes from VCs, which this is a VCs. Is it in here? Ooh, right here. So it is here. So the Goldfinger, where's my marker? I noticed in yesterday's video, you guys, I noticed yesterday that in this catalog, the pictures and the names don't align. Um, so yesterday I was circling pictures and stuff of different things and showing them on the website. And the pictures that were on the website were associated to like the one next to it. So I think in the catalog, they had some um, typos on the, the, the pictures because I noticed that with a lot of the things yesterday. Just if you watched that. Um, if you caught that, <laughs> you, I, I didn't notice it until I was till after I was like, oh shoot. Anyway, so the gold finger carrot, every handful that we've pulled in, in our trials had long, straight, and smooth roots. Gold finger impressed us with its strong tops and attractive color. This early hybrid has a sweet flavor and a crisp texture. Days to maturity is 65 to 70. So I like this because it's got an early uh, maturity, but I also like the green tops because I'm wanting to use these ones as a mulch. I didn't get a lot. I'm just trying it this year. Like I have very few seeds in here. This is more of just like a trial. They're pretty. They're pretty nice carrots. So yeah, I got those ones on VCs. Companion plants, beans, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, chives, leaves, leeks, onions, peas, peppers, radish, tomato. So again, if you plant with tomatoes, the carrot will be smaller, but it'll be sweeter. That's the rule. Okay. So gold fingers, we got them. 
species. Now, I've grown Yaya before. I love Yaya. They are awesome. They were Chaz's favorite last year. Um, they are, for baby carrots, they are so good. So good. Um, very, very excellent flavor early. Like, the baby carrots are super, super delicious, which was really, really, really um, something that I... I loved. I couldn't get a lot of these. The bigger packets were sold out. They aren't the prettiest carrot, to be honest. Um, yeah, right here. The Yaya Organic is what I grew. They are also a 70-day maturity. And they're right here. Excellent early flavor. Versatile Nantes carrot that pack a flavorful punch. Yaya continues to stand out in our trials with its great flavor in early season. This Beijo hybrid is an extra smooth and uniform, making it easy to clean and bunch. That's one thing that I loved about these. They were super easy to clean, and Chaz really liked taking these in as lunch. Um, so, yeah. Let's see. Let's take a closer look at these guys. Let's see. They are, they are really sweet, really early, and super crispy. That's what I liked about them a lot. So yeah, yeah. If you haven't grown yaya yeah before, you should really consider trying it. Um, you won't be disappointed. Okay, I've grown this uh, bolero, bolero before. Bolero, bolero is that how you say it? I don't know. I've grown this before, and I've heard that the Miami is an alternative because a lot of the times I've tried the bolero, but to, or to order it and I couldn't get it in stock. It does really well up in our area and I do I do really like it. I like this variety because it's, it's resistant to a lot of the blights that we can get here um, in our early or late weather conditions um, in the season. So it, it seems to hold up well. So that's why I wanted to find a backup in case I couldn't get this type. Um, I wanted to try this one, this Miami. So I'm planting these kind of side by side as a trial to see which, you know, if they both hold up well and if there's a major difference between the two or if I, we can even tell. So the Miami, the Miami I got from VCs and the Bol Bol <laughs> Bol Bolero I got from West Coast Seeds and I got these from West Coast Seeds last year as well. I really, I just really like them. They're a good carrot. So the Miami here. We'll see what it says on the website. Um, it's a 70 day, it's a 70 day um, carrot and it is a storage carrot. The Miami is well adapted for early or main season planting. Um, it is a bright orange six to eight inch root that have a sweet flavor which is retained during long term storage. So it doesn't lose its flavor which is so awesome you know when I fill a tote and put my tote in full of wood shavings in my car garage and I go out there in the middle of February or the middle of March and they still taste like they did when they were pulled out of the ground that to me 100% so if these ones are like the Bolero then I'm sold I will grow both of these for storage for 100% um, because the Bolero goes into, it doesn't, it's not susceptible to those blights. And so it goes into dormancy and it just holds on to that nutrition uh, or that, that flavor. And so I'm hoping, I'm hoping for good results with the Miami in the same sense as the Bolero. So we'll see. I think the Bolero, um, the Bolero is cheaper. I do know that than the Miami so but VCs is usually more expensive than West Coast seeds I did notice that with what's going on in Canada I've noticed the prices have gone up a little bit more so yeah it is a hybrid interesting okay so let's go to West Coast seeds and I want to see what the Bolero Bolero interesting their price went up too See, I got this these this spring. I paid $3.99 and they're up to $4.29 now. Interesting. I'm glad I ordered when all my seeds when I did. So these are a 70 day five day, so they do take a little bit longer to mature. 
Um, Bolero carrot seeds are a great variety for home or market. They are very sweet and crunchy and is a good keeper in storage or in the ground. So if you are in a climate where you can leave your carrots in the ground, this would be one to do. The Bolero or even try the Miami um, where you can dig them out of the ground during the winter time. Roots are bright orange, up to eight inches long and slightly tapered with a typical blunt Nantes tip. High levels of resistance to um, alternaria blight and powdery mildew, very tasty. Our bolero carrot seeds are also available as pellet seeds, blah, 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 for easier handling. handling. This variety is something of an industry standard. Because of their hybrid uniformity, they are very attractive to market growers. We think the flavor is also superb that these carrots are a nice choice for home gardeners as well as the winner of a RHS Award of Garden Merit. So again, there's 75 day seeds. They're sweet and crunchy, good keepers for storage or good to keep in the ground if you are in a climate that you can. And, um, you know, a 75 day carrot, you know, it's not the best for my area, but, you know, I can put these out as soon, the earlier, the better for carrots in my, in my zone, as long as I can keep them moist. They just need to stay moist. So yeah, Bolero, which is here. They also have them at VCs and then the Miami. Where did I just see the Miami? Did I circle it already? not in here. I actually might order more Bolero. Um, I'm just looking at the pricing here. Should I order more? I'm actually thinking about ordering the 25 gram packet of Bolero for storing. I might do it. We'll see. We go through so many carrots. It's not even funny. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna add to cart. There we go. Okay. I will check out later when I order more things that I probably don't need. Okay. So the Nantes Corliss is another one that I have grown before. Now these come from West Coast Seeds. Um, I can't remember, honestly. That's the thing about sometimes carrots. I don't remember. I think I grew these in the snacker garden that I grew. I did a video of them. I think. I can't remember who is the Canadian, the no the Yaya I did in a trough, like a water trough with dirt in it, and I think it was these Nantes that I did in the Snacker Garden. I think I succession planted. Okay, so the Nantes Corliss are a delicious carrot. Carrot shrugs aside the heavy soil and forms beautiful long fine-grained rooted roots that are bright orange throughout and as a corliss, as the name suggests, Nantes corliss carrot seeds develop cylindrical and sweet roots with relatively small tops. They have excellent flavor and are very tender. Sow these lovely carrots in raised beds or in deeply cultivated garden soil. So if you have deep soil or if you have raised beds, this is your carrot. Um, so they are sweet flavor, small tops, good for heavier soil. So if you are doing um, square foot gardening, this would be a really great option because the tops don't get overly large. So you could likely, you know, fit these into smaller spaces as like a mulch in between your other crops. Remember, you could put these with beans, brassicas, chives, leeks, lettuce, onions, peas, peppers, pole beans, radish, rosemary, sage, and tomatoes. But remember, tomatoes will make them sweeter, but smaller, okay? So that's a great option for that. So there's three packs of them I'm gonna do. The flyaway, yeah, these are all flyaways. I've grown these before. These are a 75 day. Um, I use these for everything. Um, these are an English carrot. They were bred to be unattractive to the carrot rust fly, and for some gardeners, it does offer protection. For all gardeners, it has the sweet, crisp flavor of the best Nantes varieties. Roots are moderately long from flyaway carrot seeds with a small core. 
If you ever had to deal with carrot rust fly, you will appreciate that the, the help you can get in disrupting the fly's life cycle in your orga organic vegetable garden. Combining flyaway carrot seeds with a lightweight row cover is a good strategy for eliminating pests with the use, without the use of chemicals. So this was also a award-winning carrot seed and it matures in 75 days, sweet, crisp flavor. Um, it, this, is, this was a kid's choice. So they had this taste test of, for kids, like which ones the kids liked the best and they all liked the flyaway, um, the flyaway carrots the most. And it's probably because of their small core, but they are really nice. They're sweet very sweet carrot. And I never had any issues with carrot rust fly. Um, I did have a little bit of Aster's yellows affecting a couple of the plants where ha they had um, been subject to some heavy grasshopper damage. So the Canada variety, now these would be good for somebody who has a little bit of a longer season. Um, or that you can plant your seeds earlier, just a light, slightly earlier. Or if you have like a really nice fall um, or a mild winter, this would be a great choice. Um, you could probably succession plant these and get two harvests in some of the areas that, um, you know, many of you are watching from. So this is a really nice carrot. I really like this carrot. I grew it last year. Um, it is a early seasoned um, Chantony carrot with broad shoulders. So it has a blunt tip and strong tall tops, perfect for both long-term storage and fresh eating. Kids do like to pull the, the carrots out because they don't break, they're strong topped and um, they're easy to clean because you can just rinse them out, under, out underneath a hose and they're good or dip them in the water can and rinse them off and they come clean really easily. Um, and you know, they, they, they are great for a snacker garden, but for, as baby carrots, we did eat them as baby carrots. They weren't as sweet as some of the other varieties I'd planted as, as, uh, baby carrots, but, um, you know, they are a really nice carrot. They are a 95 day to maturity. So they definitely are not one for um, short season. If you're just growing one crop, you know, they're definitely not for that, but they are a really nice carrot to grow. I'm getting some of these. I just ordered them some daikons. I'm really excited for those as well. I want to see it. I just want to see it. <laughs> Have you guys grown these before? 40 day maturity, I'm so excited. Um, these aren't the giant ones, these are the mini ones, but I'm super excited. I'm also growing those this year. Can't wait. I think I might actually be growing those. <laughs> I'm just growing everything. Why not? So anyway, that's what carrot haul I have going on. I hope that it inspires you to want, um, to want to try different varieties. And I'm just looking here, rainbow. I wanted to grow some of these, but I just, I don't know. I'm definitely not done buying my carrots. I am gonna grab some bigger carrot packets, um, like the one I just put in my cart. Growing carrots. So yeah, we have different, the different varieties. So I, I am definitely growing more nanties. And that seems to be what I prefer to grow is the nanties. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Tell me, what are you growing? What are you growing? And what is your favorite carrot? I would love to know. So much love, you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.